So when you looking at the stop of the rain, you know, normally all you notice is the rocks. Um, but if you have a closer look, you can see there's somebody sitting here, uh, hiding, using his perfect camouflage. Uh, so this is, uh, sometimes we refer to them as toad grasshoppers, but you know, it's obviously a stone grasshopper. Uh, they don't have any real wings uh, for flight, so they rely heavily on camouflage to survive in this environment. And where there's not a lot of food, you know, this is a nice protein snack uh, for a lot of, especially birds in these areas. Uh, and because this guy doesn't have quick getaway mechanisms like wings, uh, he has perfect camouflage and he exactly looks like this rock, which is a basalt, uh, which has the red oxidized layer. And uh, this guy probably over co-evolution over millennia uh, resembles the rock, you know, unless it's moving or you literally stumbling upon it, you never, never, ever going to see these guys. Uh, but typically what you will notice is um, here you have darker rocks. So grasshoppers from the species, as you go into the coast, getting to some lighter rocks, uh, they will take on exactly the coloration of that rocks within that environment. And this, that's how these guys can survive out in these tough environments without wings, without any you know, mechanisms to get away quickly from possible predators. So uh, while I was uh, strolling around in this arid environment, uh, looking a little bit closer in between the rocks, um, I spotted this little rock that looks a bit abnormal. Looking closer, I could see it's a juvenile, ground a gamma. So uh, this little guy is using camouflage to escape his predators. Um, he's using cryptic coloration that is basically blending with his surroundings so he doesn't fall prey to his uh, predators. So uh, in the animal kingdom you have different types of camouflage that animals use. Um, so this is cryptic coloration. Um, so the other one is aposmatic coloration. Uh, that is a form where an animal will show bright colors to warn other animals that it is dangerous. An example would be a western barred spitting cobra. Uh, maybe uh, some of the rubber frog species. Another form of uh, coloration that animals use is uh, mullarian coloration. So basically that is where an animal that doesn't have toxins or that's not dangerous, they will mimic the color of a dangerous species. Uh, an example would be the female uh, diadem butterfly that basically she looks exactly like the African monarch, uh, which is a toxic butterfly. Uh, but in actual fact, she doesn't contain any toxins in her body. So this little guy, he's using cryptic coloration. These are gammas. Their typical, typical diet would be insects. Um, some of the adults I've seen eating quite a bit of ants. Sometimes you would see them at the nests of specific ants and, you know, just having a feast. But in general, any type of small insect, that would be their main food source. So the, the major um, predators these guys will have, uh, aerial predators, um, that would be smaller birds of prey. Uh, ground predators um, can be snakes that can possibly take them. Uh, it's not unheard of for smaller, like uh, jackals, um, so smaller ground predators to sometimes be opportunistic and take these guys, especially some of the adults, some of the smaller ones. Uh, so they face, you know, predation both on ground level and then both from the air. That's why you can see sometimes it's looking up into the sky, uh, maybe watching if anything is coming from above to take it out.
So uh, the Huab River, this is a dry river bed. So even though we see some water flowing here, this is just from a spring within the river bed, what you refer to as fossil water. The spring starts a little bit, a few hundred meters from where we are standing currently. Uh, Huab comes from the local Tamara name, which basically means uh, the river between narrow places. So as we can see uh, to the left and to our right, lots of big mountains, and that is the meaning of Huab, uh, between narrow spaces. So uh, hopefully we can find the desert elephants within the riverbed today. So we're very lucky to have found the desert elephants. As we know, they're very, very elusive creatures. Uh, but what makes it easy for us is um, at the moment, it's the dry season. So uh, we know looking in dry river pads, that's going to be a pretty safe bet to find them. Because with desert elephants, they have a very distinct dry season range and then a wet season range. So typically in the drier periods and the dry season, um, they stay within the dry river beds, what we refer to as the linear oasis. This is where you have your evergreen vegetation, typically your springs, even though at the moment or the day we found them close to one of the villages. Um, but that is just, you know, any water source for them out here if it's a village dam if it's a natural spring uh, and that is the the water point that they're going to use and uh, as we saw today the with them moving through the village they accepted um, in the wet season uh, these areas are known for flash flooding so um, the, the, the valleys will have beautiful new vegetation the mountains will have fresh vegetation that is if the rains came and then this is where the elephants then typically move is out into the valleys, into the mountains, in the wetter parts of the season, in the dry season, then they will move back into the dry riverbeds. Desert elephants are known to go sometimes uh, several days without water, especially where you have food and water sources very far apart. Then Elephants might go for several days going to favorite feeding sites without drinking, but then they still have a water deficit and this is where their knowledge of the environment comes in, of the vegetation. So what we're seeing is um, one of the elephants just had a bit of a uh, poo there, but we can see the baby, he's quite interested. Uh, he's feeding a bit, so what he's doing is, uh, as he's feeding on the droppings, he's building up some of his bacteria because at this stage they're mostly dependent on milk, um, but they're slowly starting to feed, so uh, what he's getting from eating these droppings is the microbes and the microorganisms to digest that, uh, you know, the plant materials that he's just about to start eating you know as he's uh, kind of going off the milk slowly and starting to feed more uh, because they eat a lot of uh, woody material uh, they need those uh, that, that fl microflora to digest uh, the plant material that they're eating and that's what they're getting from the droppings a behavior that's very well developed in the desert elephant 
is the ability to uh, use metabolic water to cool down when they far away from water sources and the heat stressed so how this happen is in the past people believe that elephants are able to suck water from the stomach but what actually happens is uh, they have a special pouch in the throat area called the pharyngeal pouch so what happens is they actually regurgitate water from the stomach you know from the digestive processes which is called metabolic water this metabolic water then comes up to the pharyngeal pouch the elephants put the trunk down into the mouth they suck up this water and then they will spray the back of the ears the neck the head and that is to cool down in the desert elephants this behavior is very well developed uh, in the different areas that i've guided uh, i've only ever seen it in the desert elephants but all elephants can do it is just the desert elephants regularly do it because they typically find themselves in very hot conditions very far away from water getting a little bit heat stressed and then they use this uh, as a way of cooling down After having a drink, we see the elephants slowly moving back into the riverbed. Uh, where well, they're slowly slowing down. Now they're standing. They um, using their feet and trunks um, where they are now. It's a uh, favorite dusting spots. Uh, these are places with fine powdery ground. So what the elephants are going to do now is uh, they're going to take a dust bath. We can see them. Uh, throwing the sand onto their bodies on the head this is um, after a drink this is a way for them cooling down with the sand um, they're coating their skin with a layer of dust and then afterwards they will move into the dry riverbed which we refer to here out in the desert as the linear oasis they will probably still feed a little bit they probably will go have a rest under those be beautiful, beautiful big Anna trees there.